Now, I mentioned to you that we're doing songs that endure. I feel so strongly that our young people need to know these songs. I guess that's really one reason that I wanted to start Musical Memories. I think it has proven that I was right, that our young people do need to know these songs. You know, I take several magazines of, of um, well, the NRB was the one I found this, which is National Religious Broadcasters. I belong to that organization. And they send out a magazine, and I subscribe to it. And I want to somewhat paraphrase this article. It is titled, The Great Disappearing Hymn Act. You know, I usually like to sing as much as I can on musical memories, but I think that we all need to hear this. And I will try and not read it all, just kind of paraphrase it for you. I really shouldn't talk, after all, 15 years ago, while walk, working in an all-Christian music formatted station in California. He played many contemporary. He goes on to list how he continually played contemporary songs. Was it edifying and virtuous? Absolutely not. It was my attempt at entertainment. Today I look back on those years. Yes, times have changed, and I have progressed back to the music whose message is truly timeless, of great hymns of our faith. Funny, my wife and I live in what I now call the buckle on the Christian music belt in America. The music that dominates our family is a Christian station playing the old songs, Christian classics, and great hymns. They are being lost with our generation. Am I in my midlife crisis at 41? Has my pendulum swung off the charts? I am troubled by the recent trends at many Christian stations to modernize the music format and abandon the roots. But even inspirational stations, long the protector of classic hymn rendish, renditions, are shifting to a more modern praise music. This shift away from hymns should not be too surprising. I am not suggesting that this is evil. However, I am convinced that a generation is coming that will not know the great hymns of the faith. So though it may not be evil, it is tragic. Current debates rage on. Is contemporary Christian music entertainment or ministry? Do album sales reflect what buyers want or what record companies want them to buy? Is Christian alternative rap or metal better than having your kids listen to secular fare of the same? Bill Gothard is right when he says there must be something wrong when hymns such as When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, O oh, For a Thousand Tongues, crown him with many crowns, and how great thou art no longer resonate from the lips and hearts of children or their parents. I will send you a copy of this. It's written by Greg Fast from Nashville. I was so taken up with it because I feel so strongly that we must teach our children these blessed old hymns. Hymns that got us through a lot of trials and a lot of hard places. And I want them to know them. Take my 
my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always. and let them be filled with messages for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not all might would We've done songs that endure today on Musical Memories, and I think it's titled right, don't you? I hope you didn't perceive that as being negative. I didn't mean it that way. I'm just reassuring you and me, I'm convinced, that we do need to keep these blessed old songs alive. The reason they've endured is because they are such strong musically, the messages are good, the theology is sound. We must make sure that our children need them. I'm Martha Reed Garvin, and this has been Musical Memories.